Welcome to Sacred Sessions, light-filled, uplifting and informative conversations for people on their spiritual path. Join me, Melissa Matthews. And me, Alison Filler here, each week as we openly share our personal experiences and wisdom on life, love and spirituality in the modern world. Hi everyone, how are you today? Welcome to another episode of Sacred Sessions. I'm Alison and I'm here with my beautiful co-host Melissa. How are you today? Very well, thank you. And you? I am extremely wonderful because (laughs) you are back up here on the Central Coast with me this week. I am the Jack Henry next door now. (laughs) (laughs) So... So I'm very happy to be here. So I love it when you come up here and we film together. It's always extra fun and extra magical. So, yeah, and I hope you guys enjoy it too. So what are we talking about today? We are talking today about how to trust your intuition. Um, why are we talking about this today, Melissa? <laughs> Okay, so Alison was saying, and same same with me, it's what's coming up with clients. So it's like, how how do you trust it? How do you know that it's actually your intuition and um, and that these are your intuitive abilities that you're experiencing? It's very, very important. So Alison's got some great information on that about being grounded and also what it looks like and what it doesn't look like. Absolutely, because sometimes there can be that little interference that we're going to talk about. So sometimes, you know, trusting your intuition is, you know, comes with its challenges. So I'm looking forward to delving into this topic today. We had a little prelude chat about it. (laughs) uh, Yeah, it was very interesting, very funny. And, um, yeah. And then we also have... um, Someone else has written in and um, would like to know a little bit more about Melissa's magical abilities. Um, Not only does she talk to the crystals, but she also is really great at communicating with the animals as well. So they would like Melissa to um, share a little bit more about that today. Yeah, that's quite that's quite a humorous thing as well. And again, what it looks like and what it doesn't look like. So there you go. So that'll be wonderful, learning how to communicate with our animals because I know so many of us love our pets and, you know, the animals. I think a lot of people will understand it and resonate. I know when I talk to people about it that they say, oh, that happens with me too. So, you know, hopefully it gives you that little bit of, uh, you know, confidence there too so and i think it ties in well with um that you know trusting your intuition as Mm, well so definitely there you go and then um Um, last week we included um a little mini oracle reading which everybody loved so we're going to do that again um just to add to your spiritual practice and reflection throughout the week we're going to do another mini oracle card reading yeah um today i'm going to use the um the universe has your back deck by gabrielle bernstein and what are you going to be using and i'm using ocean stargates by michelle kingston and i picked this up um, when i was up in rockhampton with um the beautiful patty porter she has a stall and um that's where i found them so that's what i'm doing today and so there you go so should we get started like Okay, let's get into it. So how to trust your intuition. Melissa, if someone, if a client of, client came to you or you were trying to help somebody tune into their intuition or trust their intuition, mm. what do you feel like the first advice you would be giving to them? Very, very first. The very first thing is we all have it to some degree. But if we're in um, a state of, uh, you know, let's say stressed, it doesn't come through as easily. But the most, the easiest way to say it is the more relaxed you are, the more things just like flow in and you know. It's a knowing, an inner knowing, an inner trust. And you may hear it in different ways, so, you know, like, you know, seeing, hearing, whatever. It doesn't really matter. The point is, is that your intuition, knowing and trusting it, it's very different. Um, so what it doesn't look like, this is, it doesn't look like um, uh, running thoughts through your head. If that's happening and if there's this whole tangent thing going on, 
that's not what intuition is. You're not grounded. You're not feeling grounded. Maybe you're a bit racy. Yeah. Uh, maybe you're really flat. And so these are really key things to understand. Like, so you're generally feeling good and it's there, but you do have, um, for me, I feel that sense of calm. And I've said before that when I'm not calm, mm. when I've been in real distress and when I've been in situations which are really tricky, that is um, for me when my intuition is not really there. Yeah. So, but same for clients as well. Like they understand that very, very well. So that meditation and that mindfulness and that just even breathing so that you are in more of a state of um, calm than not or you're able to bring yourself back to calm a lot easier. Yeah. Mm. No, I, I think that is really very important advice because many clients that I work with, when I, you know, when we're working with them to maybe tap into their in intuition or their inner compass because we have these very important energy centers which are like our internal compass yeah sometimes actually the guides were talking to me um this week explaining it to a client it's like my my client was really having a problem trusting their intuition because that they, they feel like it often is wrong or mm. it's led them down the wrong path. So they really, it's like their compass is scrambled. It's yeah. like, it's like it's their compass has been a bit broken and scrambled, rewired a little bit wrong. Yeah. And so what we, what I had to go in and do is actually clear out and rewire and like just recalibrate, clear out any negative energy, clear out, um stress and to just really energetically rewire that inner compass so when they dropped back down into their intuition again it was just a they could connect to a more peace or calm state it feels peaceful it feels very calm and focused it feels natural and it also feels sorry to interrupt but no um it's always an uplifting or positive or like something that's really not negative or anxiety or fear no anxiety no there's none of that that's that's a that's a key factor there's none of that it, even the language that would come through um or whatever it, it's always like this is what it is it's not in a very negative and very awful way it's never it's never brought through that way mm. so yeah that's a key factor yeah so also sometimes one of the simple things to work on is um, when you're learning to trust your intuition, hmm. it's really important, like Melissa said before, to be grounded in your own energy field because if you're not even in your own energy or other people, are, you know, in your energy field, their thoughts, their feelings, their vibration, you could be picking up on their clutter instead and – I tell you what, last week we've talked about this. This happens to me and Melissa quite a lot. And for me, it's often very overwhelming because I often, we feel our clients thinking about us or um, (laughs) wanting to even book a session. And sometimes the thoughts and feelings and it can be, you know, impacting our energy field. So really learning how to ground and clear and protect our energy field first Mm. before we actually get that clear intuitive guidance. Really important. Really, really important to do that. (laughs) Look, it, uh, as practitioners, this is, this is normal. Like I was told, um, you know, that, that it wasn't normal and so I was always doing this protection and it was it was getting very fear-based, whereas in fact I just think, you know what, that's just something that this is my job and this is what I have to do. And if my, my thinking changes, then I'm – which I'm quite aware of, or even the way that my um, that I um, my body may be moving and things like that as well. So that to me is a clear indication that I'm not in my own energy. Someone um, is looking to book in, or they're thinking. Um, it can even be friends as well, you know, mm-hmm. like because you know I have mm-hmm. different things come into my head. But but that's a um, for me that's something that I have to do if I'm going to do this work. I have to really be quite vigilant about my spiritual hygiene because you know what, it just happens. Absolutely. And 
like when we talked about in that episode about ascension and the and the 5D earth the the fact that we that the, we are so empathic now that we don't only just hear our own thoughts a lot of the time mm. we can be hearing other people's thoughts coming in and that can be so hard and confusing <laughs> so yesterday, so yesterday morning I woke up and my first thought was about um it, look it was about uh I'm going to say that the, the, their apps, their app names, right, that you use in business. And they were like Reich and Dropbox and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And what if this goes wrong or whatever? And I was like, why am I thinking that? And obviously my husband was already up and he was in the office and he's thinking <laughs> this. And so that's what, when we're talking about like 5D and the way that everyone is now opening up more and more to their intuition, it's because we're actually that collective consciousness that that is what mm-hmm. we're now able to tap into at any time and so with that that's why it's important for me to understand what's mine what's not mine and so there's nothing wrong with that but I just have to understand that and that's when I just do my meditation and just see that white light come down and that's me definitely yeah because it's interesting I have noticed a lot more people telling me that it's very hard for them to connect into their intuition it's very hard because um it feels un- it feels anxious or it feels uncomfortable or they feel like it they can't trust it and so often it's because you know they're not grounded like yeah. i said and they've got yeah. a lot of things going on yeah. in their life all that mm. fear energy or anxiety or you know yeah. husbands or children <laughs> and all those other things that can be but, um we can be picking up on but i reckon this is how i look at it like this ability and this opening that we as human have is now to, you know, to tap into that and to be aware of everything, to balance that, we must be really earthed and really human. And then, and then we, you know, we're balancing it, we're leading in our human everyday lives from a state of grace, I call it, um, being human. And that's the key to it is understanding how to use it and not being afraid of it, mm. like I know, like for me, I, I was really quite, let's say, uh, it really, I really struggled with it, with this real opening because I'd had that as a child and that awareness as a child. But when it came back as an adult and I was just like, holy moly, what is going on? Because it just, it was like all that is was available to me. But yeah, I'm still going to be human. And so mm-hmm. I could have just like run off into the forest and been a fairy or something. <laughs> like that. I don't know. But, but I feel better now when I'm grounded and when I'm aware. And again, just being aware of that. It's being, and sometimes being too open. Like that's what you were yeah. saying. Like it's not good to be too open and no. to be, you know, and sometimes I, I can be like that and I have to like shut it down on too... <laughs> hypersensitive and have to like <laughs> shut it down but that's why like with kinesiology and like we can do things like whole body testing and like with a pendulum or things like that but it's about really you know coming back into your heart space coming pulling back all those fragments of you all those pieces yeah. of you that are off with this person and maybe off with and still in the past like bring them all back into you and making sure that you're really connected and grounded in your body and then you feel so much more oh that's what it feels like or you say sometimes I say to my body okay body if I was really you know grounded and just only me and my own energy show me what that looks and feels like and then just notice what your body feels sense and sees and it's actually getting to know the difference between what that scattered energy feels yeah. like and what that solid, secure, confident, centered me mm. feels like. Yeah. And only then do we then connect into connect our in. intuition and our inner compass mm. and we can hear those clear messages even Very clearly. Clear. One of the things that I do is um, – you know, it's obviously like that that breathing because I'm I'm quite aware of my energy and where it is, and and I see my energy coming back into mm-hmm. me. I've consciously called back all energy to me now, and I see it like coming in, even into the the chakras and mm-hmm. you know, bits up here, and then but everything that's not of me just falls away. So that's a good visual thing. If I'm really scattered. Um, I said last week, you know, like I go into, you know, my the reading room and I and I just sit there and do breathing for, you know, a little bit of time. 
But another thing, I'll pick up a book because I really want to um, bring my focus back yep. to the present so I'm doing something. Or I'll go and, um, and do something physical. Um, I'm not an exerciser as such, so I might go and mow <laughs> or, you know, do something like that. So that really brings me back in because I can feel, you know, the muscles working and... Um, or we can binge something, binge watch something on Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> what are you watching now? There was something that she said she was watching. I was like, oh, my Lord. And she said, oh, yeah, I'm on season two. Because... <laughs> Because it just brings Take all my everything. focus and attention into the one place just for a little while and it helps recalibrate and just bring me right back. And it's interesting. I've actually talked to – She's what, tested uh, this now. <laughs> <laughs> I had to even share with a few clients who are also practitioners lately, like, you know, they've said, oh, I just feel like I need – I just want to, like, beam out and watch TV or just, what like, for heaps at the moment. And I said – it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> we, we do it too because it helps just like. It's earth. It, it earth. is of earth. I'm paying attention to what's going on here now. Just paying attention to one thing at a time and just being relaxed in that moment just helps helps really just come back into your body. Well, it's really funny because I was coming across people, you know, who were, work, you know, working, um, you know, do, doing what I do and they're like, oh, no, I wouldn't watch TV. And I'm like, oh, they're crack. Why wouldn't you? <laughs> and then I meet because I like, there's certain things that I like to watch and, and um, you know, that like the the UK shows and, yeah. um, you know, those sorts of things. And, and Alison said, oh, no, I, I watch that sort of thing too. And I was like, oh, thank goodness I've found a kindred spirit <laughs> Because it to me it's of earth. It's it's of earth. Yeah. It helps me to balance out my head. Mm. You, you know, We're left our own lot. devices. <laughs> you know, like suddenly I'm running around in a tutu and driving a truck a little. It's like I've just really lost it. So so I find that I have to do earthly things, earthly things, earthly things. And that means enjoying earth and, and all that it has to offer in a balanced way. And you know, I know you do this too, so I'm going to share oh, another geez. little secret. I'm going to share another little secret. What happens when we watch TV or we watch we watch something on Netflix or you know? This is no ads. <laughs> this is, yeah, no, no ads, no know. ads. What happens is that is often when I'm so centered and focused and grounded that I we get out our notepads and clipboards, and that's when the real clear guidance yeah. of what we need to write down. We start doing. That yeah. so there you go. There's another little secret of how we work, how we use our intuition, yeah. and what works for yeah. us. And we're not being lazy. It's I know. Just I am. <laughs> <laughs> but it, I find that if I've got something to do, and I've done it too, like with jigsaw puzzles, and but, mm. but something like repetitive, something yeah. that's just um, I'm not paying any attention. Just, yeah, and everything falls away, and then those ideas they come in really clear, mm. and it works really, really well. Like. So we've got to be really careful as well that like sometimes when, you know, we're connecting in, we can be connecting into a false ego or like a false someone. So just making sure again that your intuition is always going to be loving and kind and, you know, supportive. And um, what I get my clients to do is to practice from that grounded state, um, what expands my energy or what contracts my energy. So I get them to think about just to get them to practice their intuition, like think about something that they love or really like yeah. and then notice what that does to your energy field or is there a particular color that comes to mind? And then you say, okay, great. And then you say, okay, show me something. Think about something that you really don't like and then notice how that makes your body feel. The contrast. It's the exactly. contrast that you're looking for. Exactly. Yeah. Or is there a color attached to that? This is the way your intuition can communicate with you and talk to you. It's just learning to work with it in yeah. these different ways. So if you've got, you know, you needing to like make decisions on something, it might look all good on paper, mm. 
But what is your higher self intuition who can see, you know, the whole bigger picture yeah, at she place? She does this all the time and I'm just like, you know, okay, it looks good <laughs> on paper. This is it. <laughs> no, you have to use your intuition as well. But that's the thing. Sometimes things can look really good on paper. People can look really yeah. good. In, you know, they can be saying all the, the right deal things. looks great. Yeah. Yeah. Guys can look all great. <laughs> <laughs> But it's really good to then just to be able to check in with your intuition about that. And if you've practiced knowing what is a yes and what is a no or, you know, is it a color that your intuition shows you or is it a feeling or is it a symbol? Sometimes we can ask to receive a symbol Symbol. if you're good at receiving images. Mm. It could just be a color. It could just be... Um, a feeling or a fragrance or something and you get to play with this this is the thing it's it can be really fun and and um yeah so an example of that um i was thinking about um a couple of years ago doing a particular course and it all sounded great Uh, and anyway so i said to my guides you know just show me yes or show me no so it was in meditation so i'm all nice and relaxed and it was like this bright red comes through and i go okay that means no don't do it (laughs) and that was it like but it was really clear it was definitely clear Mm. and the more relaxed that i am the clearer these um colors symbols and communication are yeah so the more uh relaxed more happy i am the more like easygoing or vibey you know it's easier Absolutely. It's easier. Absolutely. And I like to call in, you know, <laughs> just to just to make it more inter- you know, just to make sure I'm calling in my, you know, um divine true self. I'm con- communicating to my true true self. self, my original soul self, the soul that not some created us. No, exactly. Not not that's the thing. And it's really important and we're gonna run some classes on this we are soon. We're gonna get we're gonna have to because you know it's like <laughs> We're, gonna, we're really excited. We're putting it's, together some online classes and yeah. some work, one-day workshops yeah. as well. Um, it comes up a lot and uh, one of the things that I do is that people will come to me and and it will come through naturally in a reading like their guides will want them to know, look, you need to be clear about who you're connecting with. Yes. And you just say, okay, this is how you do it. It's so simple but the inten- it's the intention and remembering to do it so that you know and that intuition comes into play because then you know what it feels like. You know the language that's coming through and yeah. the way that's spoken, and it's not all high, high vibey and wonderful and you know peaches and cream type of thing. It's just very, um, yeah, it's very calm and centered. Those sort of communications as well. There's humor, absolutely, but, there's, but it's always kind, always yeah. kind. And so, yeah, just learn learning how to have that discernment. I know we've talked about that in other episodes. Just really learning, hone, like practicing. You know, we've we've practiced extensive extensively and yeah. studied extent because you know it's something that it's our job. It's our job, and we it's something. It. What else would we be doing anyway? <laughs> doing anything else? It's always like, what know? else would we it's be our, doing? It's our so passion. it has been a learning. It's a. It, it's it's. We're not perfect in the beginning. No one's perfect in no. the beginning. It's just learning, having lightness about it, having some fun with it, you know, reading books or going to some classes and learning stuff is really part of the the journey of making sure that you are connecting into um, the most highest, highest, pure um, energy possible, the Christ energy, the God energy, the light energy. Oh, that just gave me goosebumps. (laughs) Hello. It's it's because of me. (laughs) And... I mean, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna. Put, I'm just gonna include this. Um, we've talked about this as well before. That like I haven't. We haven't always been comfortable with the God word. No. And things like that. But I have realized, and I have learned throughout the years that not having comfortability with Christ energy or God and or divine love energy or just that energy for whatever reason we can by default connect to something that is not of the yeah complete pure mm. love so just throwing that in there to be mindful about it, how important it is to 
become as comfortable as you are yeah. with that. And it's important not to be um, fearful about that. And if you're around people that are fearful about that, that also that brings that in as well. So it takes you out of that um, that high frequency of love yeah. and relaxed, you know, and it takes you out of joy. And when it takes you out of joy, it's a bit like when you're down in your normal everyday human life, you you pick up the toxic friends, yeah. you know, and you don't feel great. So yeah. that, it's the same sort of thing. So you yeah. want to be really clear about what information you bring through. And that's why, like, with what we do, we have to know um, that we are in that state. We have to know that our connection is clear. And it is very, very simple, very easy. But it's just practice, 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 knowing what it feels like, knowing what it doesn't feel that's like. That's it. And that's it. And, um, yeah, it, it makes it a lot easier to understand. I, yeah, I myself, I had a, a bit of a problem with, um, you know, with some of the names like the, uh, like Christ consciousness. I didn't understand what that meant, which was obviously like the highest, purest. Um, and um, so it's more about that, the intention of what that is rather than, um, you know, being turned away from it because, you know, certain things or there were certain um, connotations, connotations attached to it, attached yeah. To it yeah. definitely yeah definitely but it, it that's it that's just what it means and um and if i think of it as um as a color it's usually like a bright white um or even like a gold gold yeah. gold. gold is an amplifier as well so but just so that you understand like where we're coming from with that yeah. because i think it's really important yeah um Look, because I, if you do start opening up your intuition and checking in, you know, you could be easily picking up on a lower yeah, energy and, yeah. and lower vibration, but you want to be completely centered in your own energy and connected to your own higher yeah, self, yeah. pure energy, and just bringing through that. Yeah. And the reason also, like as humans, that we want to be in our own energy is because we want to make our own decisions about whether or not we want to watch um, Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> or other things as well but we want to make sure that these are our choices and adding to our life so it's not just like when we're connecting with the spirit world like being mindful these things apply in everyday life as well and Absolutely. that's why i'm really practical and my guides are like you know boundaries are also like for humans so if you think about it like if you're walking through a crowd or you're in a room and you know what you just don't you know that you just don't want to go over into that corner over there and talk to that person it's they're just not for you you can hear it whatever it's the same like in the spiritual thing as well it's the same as when you're meditating and connecting in with guides or with others as well you you want to be discerning don't get excited just because they're communicating with you or just mm -hmm. because your audio clear audience is mm -hmm. opening up don't think oh my gosh you know that's so excited someone's talking to me mm -hmm. like be discerning ask mm -hmm. them the question you don't have to be rude i'm never rude and i just say look you don't belong here like although you know i have told one you popped up i stayed in, in a bank in rural victoria in the accommodation upstairs and i was woken up in the night by by um you know by a soul that hadn't passed over going, you reneged on our deal and i said no i didn't this is a bank i said get out I was like, <laughs> so but I knew, like, that it wasn't about me. And I could have become frightened or whatever, but he was just, you know, he he, he obviously had, um, you know, unfinished business and he was staying there. But, you know, but I knew and I understood that. And I wasn't fearful about it either. And that's yeah. the key because, you know, we're, we're navigating our way in what they call 5D now, which is where all of our senses are opening up. And But we need to understand how to use it so that we can continue yeah living well without being overwhelmed without being overwhelmed yeah so there you go okay, okay. well so, should we uh, we talk about you communicating with the animals now yeah so uh what episode was it that we talked about crystals maybe nine seven or eight or nine yeah something like that yeah something like that <laughs> so we do our research <laughs> so in there you know i was talking about how i communicate and work with crystals well 
it's the same thing for me with animals as well. And um, and I've always had it and always known it. And children know it really well. And, you know, and it's we would call it like uh, figments of our imagination or whatever. But, you know, suddenly you find that the dog is, uh, you know, doing what you've asked it to do yeah but like because you know so the animals you know knowing how they communicate with you um and understanding that it's not a figment of your imagination or you know is it a figment of your imagination ground being grounded what we've just talked about really comes into that as well so i did it quite naturally as a child um the same as like with you know um you know old auntie dory visiting and things like that as well like you know that was okay but with animals um i find it very very easy to do it but i must be centered and grounded um so i remember going out to a horse stud um stables and this particular this horse he'd come over from europe and um and it was quite you know quite a warm australian summer beautiful um property that he's on um, but he just arrived and and he and he wasn't feeling great, so I just happened to go out there and um, and I um, said to my friend Odd, he was showing me this you know this beautiful horse and the horse starts talking to me, and I said yeah he's not happy because um, the flies he says oh they don't have flies in Europe like this because <laughs> it was that sort of hot thing and that was annoying him so they ended up getting him this special thing which which helped him a lot but I did he have a cork hat. <laughs> we didn't have a cork hat, but they have like this mesh thing that, that goes over and it stopped it. So it made him a bit more comfortable. It's a very light coat, but it's almost like a, a mesh type thing. And um, But he was telling me like that he missed his old friends and that. So, mm-hmm. you know, those sorts of things like where um, you can communicate naturally with them and get them to understand. But he came right up to me and I just said, I'm really... I'm I'm really frightened because you're so tall and big because you know they are big like they're they're really big (laughs) and um and so there was just that sort of stepping back so he understood to step back a little bit but he wanted you know some affection as well and he just felt you know out of place but he's a wonderful horse and he gets on very well now and and that but even like with our dog like honestly our dog black staffy old woman dog (laughs) i find that really interesting like talking with her and there's times when she came to us very nervous Mm. and very stressed and very anxious older dog yeah you know um she was rehomed but she'd had some difficulties and dogs had hurt her in the past so you know we uh when she came to us she didn't understand human words so it was by picture so um, we would send her pictures and my husband said I don't know how to do it but he learned how to do it so I say to my husband so when you when you're talking to her um, so say what you wanted to do we are going in the car and I said and so you watching her um, go up and you're walking up to the car and she's getting in the car and then I'm going to put the you know um, clip you in there in the back and you're going to sit in the back and you're going to be happy Mm-hmm. and then we're going to drive to the park and then I'm going to get you out. And so, but but he was talking, but it was also with the picture. So she got used to human words and the same as he got used to understanding what we know as telepathy. So mm-hmm. I do this and it's yeah. the same with trees and things like that as well and forests. Can, can and, you tell Stelzy, my beautiful golden copper spaniel, that she can't chase rabbits in the mall. We're going to go back and play on the beach in the water no, instead of going off in the dunes chasing rabbits. No, that's your responsibility. <laughs> You're her mother. I've got another friend actually. Um, she's got a, um, a beautiful little shih tzu and I went there one day and uh, – and she said, well, you know, what about him? And I said, oh, no, he knows. He won't look at me because he knows that once he starts talking to me that then you can say, tell him to do this. And so that's why he doesn't communicate with me. And she said, really? And I said, yes, that's why. So mm. sometimes they don't want anyone to interfere. They yeah. just want that. Yeah. Very but, interesting. Yeah. I know Yeah, I know. Um, our last dog, Black Labrador Ebony, <laughs> she was 13. Um but in her old age, yeah. I used to have to, um, you know, my daughters would be like, what's wrong with Ebony? What's wrong with Ebony? Because she'd like get up from the room and like go and leave or she, you know, she just didn't want to be around people so much or she just looked in a bad mood. And I do remember having to like, you know, try and talk to her and, and she did tell me that mm. she was hurt 
you had her feelings hurt by something or just sometimes if there had been a bit of, you know, too noisy. too noisy in the house or arguing or things like that, you know, animals, they do, they get really, really affected. And um, I think, you know, um, they do get affected if we're down, like they can carry a lot of the carry a lot, the, of, a lot of stuff. But the cat in other, you know, like the cat, the cat I have a Burmese cat. Here, when I come here, this old cat, you. Back. Okay. It just goes back to sleep. <laughs> you again. Uh. <laughs> I know, but I call him the Zen master because nothing phases him. He'll just want to come and sit on your lap and just like exude this peace energy. So I see him as just like the Zen master of the house, that yeah. his role in the house is to just, you know, pump out that peace pump energy, out pump out love. He'll come and sit on everyone's <laughs> lap and, you know, so I think, you know, there's so much we could talk about animals and I know everyone probably has their own stories to tell. Well, you know, they, um, whenever my dog is a bit unsettled, Mm-hmm. I actually look at myself. Mm. That's a, a key for me to have a look at myself. Sometimes it has been that it's me. Sometimes it might be that it might be my husband or someone that's visiting. She definitely picks up the energy mm. of, um, you know, if you get really ungrounded people that, that come into your house and they want to play with the dog and you say, please don't, please don't. Um, but they keep on saying no, I, you know, that sort of thing. And suddenly, like, she's all revved up and she's taken on their personality. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and I don't, we don't like that because, you know, she's <laughs> she's our dog. But, <laughs> but, yeah, we want to, you know. But but I do I do use her behaviour as a gauge. Mm. Like, I, f- I find that. And Well, dogs are great at, you know, they – Knowing who's trustworthy or who's not, or who's a, you know that you know they're great guard dogs that way. Yeah, they're great like guard that. dogs. But that, um, but I will. Um, so if you're starting out and you you want to um, to do that, one thing that I can recommend to you is if you're doing your meditation and your breathing and you're very very calm, and then like and and just tune in with the dog or the animal, and and just see if you you get any response. Of course, you know like it's. The intention is high and pure that you're connecting in with this animal, your animal, mm. not anything else. So you're making it clear that this is who you're connecting in with. And um, and just see what comes up. And, and even like journaling works really well. But, you know, we um, how we first came across it was with our girl. She, she found it very difficult to settle and she was... Um, She'd had some difficulties. So my husband went for his first reading. He drove down to Wollongong, which is about two hours south of Sydney, mm-hmm. um, with the dog and had his first reading with an animal communicator. Oh. And that was that was like a very, very good thing um, and it worked really well for us. So Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. I know. That's I know. beautiful. So, and she's just a joy. Like we love it and that's what she brings into our life. So that communication, we're not always talking with her. She's not the centre of attention. But it certainly helps us to understand yeah. that. It does. And I remember, you know, when I was communicating back with, you know, my Labrador back then, like trying to help reassure her or get, get you know, that, you know, we're sorry or, we're, you know, we're sorry mm. that we're I mean, maybe arguing a bit or like, bicker, like you know, just big noise in the house. But I've also done things like... I know you can do kinesiology on animals. You can do Reiki on animals. Yeah. I've done Reiki on the pets. I've done emotional freedom technique, even tapping. I surrogate, yeah. surrogate because I know when my, you know, Ebony was in pain a bit and things like that as she got older, I or to clear the energy, I yeah. would tap my own points, so set it up that I'm tapping for her or just tap little points on her. Yeah. And just to help calm their nervous system mm. and help them. So yeah. it's there's so much we can there do is. with our animals and pets there too. Is. And it, it does make a difference and it helps them. So, you know, you know, so there you go. Awesome. Now we're going to get on to the um, mini oracle readings now, are we? Sounds good. So last, you know, so last week I used um, Rebecca Campbell's Work Your Light and the theme for that was Trust Your Niggle. And you used the Universal Love Cards by Tony Carmine Salerno. And that was the Sacred Union card that came up as well, which was all about 
trusting that sacred union yeah. within again. Yeah. And so we thought we'd do another little... Yeah, because we really like it. <laughs> so we hope you do too. So um, should I start? Yes, please. Okay, all right. So I've done a little bit of a shuffle. So I'll, I'll just go through my process. So I'm actually calling uh, light to this time and space now. I call back all energy I've given away or left behind to myself now. And I can actually see that as I'm saying that it's coming back into me and releasing what is not mine. So that's what's happening. And I ask for the highest guidance to flow through me now to bring through a message that is for everybody. This will add to your spiritual practice, your reflection as you go about the week. Okay, so, and here's the card. It's called... Um, touchdown okay and touchdown it reads here the runway is clear go for it touchdown great time to pursue that goal you're ready to land and this is talking about people that are going forward in their lives now and for some it will be something that you've been working on it will be like a great leap it's time to move forward and for others it will be something very very simple um, what would that say like as in love and moving towards being more of you so they're saying like getting in touch with yourself so for some there'll be self-realizations that will come through and that's part of touchdown that's part of that you know going for it as well and the next one is meditation <laughs> hello <laughs> And it says your meditations are improving somewhat and you're ready to teach these start classes. Pass on what you've learned. Oh, I, I, I just picked it up. Okay, I just picked it up. I didn't, that's not a planned one. But that is actually what we're doing. So we're going on to do that. And here, I'll pick one out for Alison. Yeah, it's touchdown. It's the same one though. <laughs> meditation's the same one. What's it's getting freaky? On? Promotion. A promotion pay rise for material advancement and acknowledgement is being recognised. Okay, I'm going to stop now. Okay, because it's obviously. <laughs> so anyone who's been anticipating some, Starting new. some new stuff coming in and sounds good. Sounds it does good. sound good. So, you know, go for it. Like get in touch and, you know, with your inner self and move forward in as little or as big a way as what you are ready to do. So there you go. I tell you what, using Oracle cards, starting to use Oracle cards all those years ago as a way of just helping me ground or just connect to something positive every day just to bring through, just reminds me so much of how simple it is just to have to to create have this in your daily spiritual practice because just to just when you can't think of any positive words sometimes or you're really needing that pick me up hmm. aren't oracle cards just so brilliant they are and i when i first started what I found really difficult was that I didn't actually know where to start or what to do so I could do meditation but then I wanted to add more to it. And that's why, um, you know, like reflection and thinking about, um, you know, and positive things or whatever that would add into it. So I might read a book or um, like Oprah Winfrey has one out now, I think called Soul Conversations or something like that. So I might read a passage from that or just something that added mm. to my meditation. And what that does, what that did for me was it helped me to understand myself more and it helped me to make decisions that were for my interest so I wasn't in anyone else's energy I wasn't being swayed manipulated or whatever so I could be clear about what I wanted and what I didn't want about what my rights and responsibilities were so it helped me Absolutely. in that way so there you go so what are you going to do okay so I am pulling from Gabby Bernstein's the universe has your back deck and I'm just do I've just been doing a similar process, just tuning in. What is what do we need to know for everyone this week for their highest good? And I just give it a shuffle. And then for me, I just whenever I intuitively feel to stop, I just stop and I just pick the card. And there we go. Okay, and so this card says, In any moment I can surrender to the powerful presence of love through prayer, contemplation, and Stillness. Hello. Is that not what we've been talking about? <laughs> Absolutely. And 
that that when I read that card, it just helps me bring feel so much more at peace and just to be able to surrender to the a power of and presence of love through prayer, contemplation, and stillness in any moment just gives me such a feeling of um, love, support, and serenity and brings it back to what's important to me in my life. And maybe that's something you could think about this Mm. week to be able to bring it back, what is important to you in your life. And it really helps you can to get really clear. And um, and so then I'm going to pull another card. And this card says, I am a spirit having a human experience and I'm here to get closer to love. And I love that too. It's got a little picture of the eyes and the third eye. And this having this spirit and that's the thing that you know when I first understood that we are not just a human with a spirit but we are actually we have this soul this spirit in this human body that we have come down we have created this vehicle of a human body to live to have this life experience this lifetime it just really helped me um, put things in perspective and help me to um, get clearer and clearer again about where I want to put my time, my thoughts, my energy, what's not for my highest good anymore, because this is a really precious life. You know, I've been told, you know, we get told so many times, you know, well, I have just to stop. Your life is precious. This, this, just having this precious experience yeah. is just and we're here to get closer to love and that's what I know me and Melissa feel that we are you know and what we are we're just a channel for love down here on mm-hmm. earth this lifetime and so I just thought that was a really good card yeah and we just do the best that we can you know we're not running around like <laughs> what glass we just we're just doing the best that we can and so just pulling those cards, just just allowing that energy just to like filter into us. And then um, I hope that has helped you to be able to connect mm. to your intuition this week and to know what it looks like yeah. and feels like when you're connecting to your intuition. That's right. So this week what I ask, you know, if you would, you know, if you want a little bit of something to reflect on, you know, maybe a, a, if you call it a challenge, I'm not really sure what you call it. But like, if you're going to uh, spend some time just sitting, meditating, and uh, and reflecting, perhaps actually think about what intuition looks like in your life, what it doesn't look like, because that is the key. It's what it looks like for you. So we can give you examples. But it's important that you understand what it doesn't look like and what it does look like. Absolutely. And if you do have some issues with trusting your intuition because you've got mixed wires going on or you've got, you know, um, negative thoughts, a lot of negative thoughts and stuff that, you know, or in the past you haven't wanted to trust your intuition or follow your intuition because you knew that it was going to go against the grain somehow or it was just, you know, it was difficult to, you know, trust your intuition. You just want to keep the peace or just, you know, go along with things not to rock the boat Mm. please reach out or please you know work on that this week of how ask your guides call in that christ energy ask your guides to help you unscramble and help you really get reconnected to a really good um inner compass again yeah very very important Mm -hmm. so there we are so is there anything else that you would like to add to that allison no, it's just that that made me really happy. I know, it does, doesn't it? <laughs> it just makes me really happy, you okay. know? So There you go. So uh, that's very interesting about that deck because Alison and I have actually been talking about doing monthly online classes so that, um, you know, that we can expand upon this and it's, you know, once a month where, you know, you have that little bit of time where you can look at the month that was, what's coming up. 
learn you know about meditation and mindfulness and and how to connect in with yourself so it's your sacred session and that's what we've um we've been planning so and as you see the cards uh that i drew <laughs> were saying that as well so it looks like we will be doing it <laughs> it's it's like, like we have to get our butts to escape. <laughs> so that website's being built <laughs> yeah the website's being built you know on that computer actually so there you go so until um next week all um links and names of decks etc will be in the show notes as you know and um we'll see you next week bye bye for now see you later bye Bye. thanks for tuning into this week's episode of sacred sessions your comments questions and topic suggestions are welcome so connect with us on facebook and instagram and through our websites naturally all links are in the show notes 